doing some basic tests on my cavity filter just uh, messing about basically with bits of wire to see what it'll do and uh, yeah I'm not sure whether it's going to be any good or not this is part two of my cavity filter I'm making and uh, I needed to put some fixings on the top for the top plate this plate here so what I've done is I've cut with the angle grinder down into the metal tube just there and you can see it done that and the idea is I've got to drill this top I've also put the um, kind of can see that that's the uh, uh, input stub or whatever you got to call it which goes to the center of the um, BNC so what I've got to do now is mark some holes around here and drill them so I can put this top on with some washers and I can clean up the surfaces to make a, a good electrical connection on the top been away for many days and I've come back now and carrying on with the uh, cavity filter got it set up here done a fair bit of work to it and just experimenting with it I found it really needs a, a copper rod you can't use any other material um, I've tried uh, a steel rod and it didn't work and I've got it set up here on the the v, uh, nano VNA and it will actually um, chop the signal down by up to 60 dB which is pretty pretty good and all you do is slide this rod back in and out and I've got it set up there's a T piece there and it's got a dummy load there and um, you know I can roughly see the graph there and by sliding this rod I don't know where you can see it I can move the frequency up or down across between 400 to 500 you can see it's it's moving there there we go I've had to put a shim in in here because it was too loose and I've got a, a locking screw there but I'll show it in more detail I'll just disconnect the meter and I'll take it apart okay I'll take the rod out the center to start with it's a piece of copper tube there you go put that down and then I made a, a piece of shim out of um, uh, a lager tin and I'm going to make a better shim for it and then this is held on by four bolts or screws and I actually cut slot into the metal tube knocked them in as a tight fit and soldered them and uh, I'll undo this and it's all a bit crude and the, the cylinder is from um, I think this nitrous oxide canisters people breathe and I found it thrown in the hedge and it's all built from scraps I'm just going to take out the vice and take the top off now I just undo this it comes out and I said this is one of these um, nitrous oxide canisters and I've chopped the top off the angle grinder I've cut slots in here and I've um, knocked these um, screws in sort of thing or bolts and I've soldered them a ordinary lead solder so that's it there's nothing else in there it's fairly it's fairly it's just a metal tube basically now just a metal plate with a, a bush soldered in the top and a BNC connector and it's just a piece of just a piece of recycled metal from I think it was an old cooker I had and um, there's a BNC connector and you can see the shape of this piece of wire hopefully you can and the dimensions are the piece that goes to the BNC is five millimeter and it's a 90 degree angle 
15 mm, a vertical piece 30 mm and a return of 35 and then the V bit here that's 25 each leg so it's difficult to see in this light hopefully you can see what the shape and I've put a piece of heat shrink sleeving on the piece there so you don't short out on the, the rod that slides in and out um, but this is enameled uh, copper wire and uh, it's just like a scrap piece and that's all there is to the inner but because the centre here is a bit loose as I say I've cut a piece of um, tin up and made you know like a shim and I'm going to make a better one because I need to scrape the paint off so that's what I'm going to do next okay so I'm going to show you an interior view I've cut the pipe down and put a pit on the top and you can see the coupling or primary loop there and that's to the BNC connector there and that's the shim I've made up see it you know the sparkly bit so it's um, uh, not such a loose fit so it's a tighter fit to slide it up and down and then there's the locking bolt there I've cleaned up the copper so it's a good electrical connection and I'm going to put it back in the bowl in a minute so you can see what it looks like there okay there's my cavity filter that shows the top now so I'll respray a fresh paint and um, I'm just looking at it now and um, I can, let's move the right let's uh, set it to 600 megs 600 megs right so the cavity filter it tails off a bit there at let's have a look yeah it towers off at um, 572 meg and if I lower this down you can see it gets sharper and let's see what that frequency is that's 510 oh, let's go down let's go down to that that's 494 I really want to filter out 465 so let's see if we can get it lower let's see what that is that's 480 so I'm going to change the scale so it's 465 so how wide is the dip so that's my first ever cavity filter uh, it's currently turned to, to um, 465 megahertz it will go right up and down the band with the tuning and um, I think the insertion loss if I remember is 60 dB for the uh, unwanted signals and uh, it's got a bandwidth of 2.5 megahertz so on the, the slot Or the dip trace across here is 2.5 megahertz or the trough or notch or whatever you like to call it so I'm quite pleased with that and uh, yeah 
So the second one I've got to build now. So this one rejects the signal and the other one I'm going to build will pass the signal. And to be honest I don't think they're going to be any use for what I thought it would work for. I wanted to notch out the interference but um, yeah it might not work like that.